Hello, my name is Voya and welcome to my deep guide. Today we are revisiting the Quirk Logic paper or papier uh, tablet because in April, late April, it has received an update, a uh, very important update, update 1.7. So let's check that one out. All right, so we're updated to the version 1.7.12 and this one like came out over a month ago, almost two months ago. I am really like behind on the schedule, but there's been so many things going on, including a building and resetting up and switching from my old workstation to a new workstation. There's going to be a video on that as well, but that's now finally almost finished. That's a huge process. So now I'm able to get back on track with the videos and yeah, uh, churning them out. So the first one in line was this one. And I think it's a very important one because it just shows uh, how dedicated the Quirk Logic team is to their platform and that they are listening to their audience and that they're improving the platform overall, which is a very nice thing to see. So this is not just an incremental update. It actually has really important features that have been added and some fairly original features, again, differentiating the paper completely from any other uh, um, tablet or e-note device on the market. So I'm going to start with the most important one, which is basically something that we now have in a workbook. So before I start, I just want to tell you something. Uh, here's an experience that I had. So when I up, uh, updated to the new version, I started writing. Of course, this is super zoomed in. This is the normal view, right? So the output that I got was this <laughs> super squiggly thing, which was not that good, of course. So my first uh, course of uh, this is not how paper normally functions. So I knew that something was wrong and it wasn't like that before the update. So the first thing that I did was reseat the nib. That wasn't it. It was still behaving the, prop, uh, the same way. And then the second thing that I did was actually go into settings, uh, system, and then pen calibration. And then I did my pen calibration and the result, the result of writing in the same area of the screen was then this, right? So you do have this very clear differentiation of pre-calibration, post-calibration. So if you do experience some unsatisfactory or squiggly lines or something after the update, then just recalibrate the pen and everything is going to be just fine. All right, so now let's uh, dig into the new uh, features of update 1.7. And the first one is going to be workbook bookmarks. However, it's not just to bookmark your pages because you do have pages in a workbook, right? So you can flip pages. No, 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 no. It's actually something far, far cooler. So what they have implemented are infinite bookmarks. So that means that if I have like this infinity canvas thing, and if I had a very large project here, what I can, and if you're kind of, you know, scrolling around and you have a huge kind of a uh, list here of ideas, uh, as it grows, it might be a little bit more painstaking and difficult to navigate and to find which one do you want. So now we have this option here. So let's say, for example, I wanted to have a way to quickly go to this one, this one, or that one, or the, or the one over there. So all you do is now long press to get your contextual menu. And we have the new one, which is the bookmarks. So as you tap on the bookmarks, you have two options. Bookmark and plus is naturally add a new bookmark. And bookmark here is basically an overview of existing bookmarks. So now I've already added existing bookmarks, block one and block two. And if I tap on it, it's going to take me directly where I want. And furthermore, on the bottom left, you have the button to return to bookmarked page, which is your previous view where you were, not the default view or anything, the previous state. So basically, if I go like this, then I just want to have a quick glance at data that I added in block two, for example, I can go here, read my data here, still pre calibration, as you can see, and then go back to where I was. Same uh, zoom level, same orientation, same state. This is incredibly good and super useful. It's just like 
I, I can't even begin to describe how cool this in this thing is and how cool it is that they've implemented it this way so how do you add a new bookmark it's also really simple long press contextual menu bookmarks add a new bookmark and then you can get rid of this one which is saying hey now i'm in bookmark mode uh, but all you need to do is now circle with a pen which area i want to bookmark and then you name it so let's say i want to name it block three whatever it may be right so now i have block three and if i go back to my bookmarks i can now switch to block one if i wanted it to or then um, oh and also you can just uh, tap on this and basically continue looking from here you can still navigate when you're in this bookmark and you still have that button to go back to where you were and let's just uh, get completely out of the view and let's go somewhere over here and maybe i want to go back to my block three so no not add a bookmark but actually just select a bookmark and i want my bookmark block three there we go we're in block three and that's that so this is really 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 cool uh what are the additional things that you can do with the bookmarks just to kind of cover the normal things so the existing bookmarks that do have a sub menu the three dots here and you can open rename or delete them so this is something that really does make a lot of sense one thing that i see that might be a thing that they might want to actually add in the future is the as the document grows and you actually start having um, dozens of bookmarks you might uh, as well end up in a situation like that we might want to have an option to uh, list and sort and categorize or organize these bookmarks in a different way alphabetically numerically alphanumerically uh, what, whichever way they want and maybe to have an option between this style view and a list view as well because this is an early implementation I do get it but this is an organizational tool first and foremost and as such it would benefit to have also the uh, ability to accommodate uh, large-scale projects and large-scale uh, large workbooks because that's something that builds up over time but overall I am incredibly pleased to see this kind of functionality and it's a uh, yeah I mean it's already been a, a, a powerhouse of a work tool but now with this one it's even more usable which is really really cool thing to see all right so the book reader has seen a lot of improvements and additions so now we have the option to annotate our documents and books finally and it works pretty much exactly the same as you would expect it to you still have the same super fast and it's actually i think works for faster long press to select and then just kind of highlight and select that way so this is something that i think is really really cool uh, how do you control the brush and the pen options for uh, annotating your documents well you have this new icon over here which is a little pen which makes perfect sense so when you select it you have two options you have a brush which is a line as you can see so that's the line option or you have a highlighter option as well and you can choose your colors black or shades of gray rgb as well and also we have undo and redo levels which is a nice thing so this is a highlighter which how do you control the color of the highlighter? Because this is going to be yellow. I can already see in the grayscale that this is high. I think it's just doing the uh, regular uh, PDF highlighting, which is the, the default color for highlighting in PDFs is yellow. So I think that's what it's doing. These are not selectable. You can't interact with the annotations in any way. In the brush options, let's go here. You have six brush sizes. So you can get to very, very thick and you can get to really thin now the thin one is really cool because you can write oh oops, stop pressing the button maybe that would be a good thing uh write small fonts 
at a zoom level, like a very, very zoomed out level. And then you can just kind of add it like this. So flexibility is definitely there. And you do have the color option here. I'm going to export this and check it out and see how it exports. So I'm going to try and do some uh, red uh, annotation. Then I'm going to do some green lines like this and see what happens with the text actually and some blue really thick lines just to see how it actually transfers and we do have a highlighter there all right so i'm just gonna export this page and then i'm gonna see how it looks like when it's exported i'm experiencing a very strange issue which i haven't really thought about but it is regarding this document because I wanted to export this and see how it actually uh, yeah, exports. But um, where's the export option? I don't find the export option anywhere here. I can't really find it absolutely anywhere. And if I click on the three links or the three buttons down here, I get rename, open or delete, no exporting of any kind. This one down here is just to download from uh, new documents from Google Drive or Dropbox. So that's not it. So then I plugged it in to my computer. Um, but yeah, I don't see it at all. It has been set up as a device, but as what kind of a device, I don't really know. And there's, yeah, there's no, no way of, finding it so that's rather weird and yeah currently i don't know how to get a document annotated document off from the quirk logic paper onto anywhere else and that's not what you want undo works redo at least on a single level works i don't know how many levels it has or how it will behave with multiple levels that remains to be seen over time that's something that has to be tested out uh, more thoroughly. So overall, I think that this is a very important addition to the functionality of paper in general, especially for its reader capabilities, because now you're finally able to use it as an annotation device for your documents, which is absolutely perfect what this format is for, because 13.3 inches, super thin, one of the best, like almost no distance between the pen and the screen. It's really, really good as uh, writing goes. And the pen, I wish we could have a different pen than this one. I really don't like this pen, but it, it, it's okay, it works. Um, but the overall functionality of the device with this stuff is really really cool to finally see it added to the um, um, to the platform now what happened here oh that was kind of weird I don't know if you saw that this one was blacked out and then you go back page forward and back and then it's normal well anyway the functionality is really good and a really welcome thing to see on a paper one thing that I would note is how that functionality has been implemented so this is a pet peeve of mine, and I think this is something that's really important for manufacturers to kind of keep in mind. And you usually see it in platforms that haven't planned for a certain thing, and then you have these, um, you know, add-ons add <laughs> on the side of it. The idea behind any platform to kind of use and to make it user-friendly in user experience and user interface is consistency. So that's something that's inc incredibly important. And that's something where, for example, a really good example is Remarkable Platform. It doesn't matter if it's one or two, their platform has perfect consistency. Whether you're in a document, ebook, or a notebook, the availability of tools, where they are, how they function, how you access them and what you do with them is perfectly consistent. Uh, so for me, that consistency remarkable uh, would be on number one place of these uh, platforms. Then you have Supernote, which has improved their functionality and they're like almost exactly the same. They just have some things that are still a little bit lacking. For example, the uh, marquee selection tool, it doesn't copy the, it doesn't share the clipboard between documents and notebooks as well. But the main thing, which is 
uh, the icons, how you make a brush and all of that, that kind of stuff is extremely consistent. So that one's a very close number second. Then a little bit further down, you have uh, Books Platform, which is uh, fairly consistent, but also really different. So it really is kind of, you have to jump to hoops, even you have to, it's very different basically how you access these things between a notebook and a PDF reader annotation. So that's like a general overview where I would put then how I would categorize these things. And Quirk Logic is falling into um, fourth place in, in that category, simply because in, uh, in a workbook, for example, we have this contextual menu, long press contextual menu. Uh, users of Quirk Logic paper are trained to use this, to recognize these icons and to understand them properly. So that's something that's really good and consistent. However, now we have this new edition here. And when you actually go through this, there's no longer a contextual menu. And what we've learned no longer applies and no longer works. The way it's implemented with this simple icon is perfect. On its own, in an isolated environment, there's absolutely nothing wrong with this approach. So don't get me wrong, this works perfectly. But we either have to have both the contextual menu and this icon as alternatives available both in workbook and in the PDF to have consistency between these things. Right now you have one set of skills and one set of knowledge that you have to apply, learn, learn and apply in a workbook to perform one task and to perform the same task. Now in a PDF, you have to learn and storage in your mind and in your memory in a different set of actions in order to perform the same thing. So that's basically the only kind of a thing that I have uh, against how this has been implemented. So let me just clarify, this works great and on its own for annotation. I don't think anyone's going to have any problems with it. I'm just saying that from the elegance and ease of use standpoint, this is something to at least keep in mind. Right now, it's not an issue at all. It's, it's a no non issue. But it is an indication that uh, features are being added on without the consistency being kept in mind. And over time, as the platform and functionality grows, as more tools are being added, that can become a problem. So right now, not a problem at all. This is just a small kind of yellowish flag as in, hey, uh, kind of be careful, careful not to start adding things up and lose the consistency of how the users are about to use your device across different functionalities. So that's my only concern about uh, this functionality wise and just how it works. It's all good. And one really big addition, final big addition uh, of the update 1.7 is the support for hyperlinks, which means that with the added uh, addition of annotation in documents and the support for hyperlinks, this <laughs> might as well be called the MDO update for Quirk Logic paper because Prior to this update, you could not use the My Daily Organizer that they make, which is your organizer for your year and yeah, whatever you may want, which is entirely dependent on hyperlinks because it has over 11,000 hyperlinks. The whole point is that you have the uh, boxes here that you kind of navigate through the entire year by using hyperlinks and you navigate to the day that you want. So for example, we are in June and I added some kind of notes here and you have the ability to annotate your document because this is still a document uh, and yeah, basically add things. So I can just zoom in, maybe not that much. <laughs> that was quite a lot of a zooming in. And this is where that small brush really comes into play. And now, finally, we can use the MDO on the work logic paper. 
same writing speed, same writing precision, everything working pretty much exactly the same. And of course, the same kind of thing, double tap with two fingers will reset the view there. So this is really cool because this device basically lends itself perfectly for such use. And I've uh, received quite a lot of questions from paper uh, users. Uh, hey, does it work on, uh, does MDO work on Quirk Logic or not? And now with the update 1.7, it finally does. So uh, yeah, for example, I can just go into today, the day of recording is June 2nd, and I can just zoom here and you can see that zooming and navigation is very, very quick. So I can just go here and say, um, record and edit uh, paper 1.7 video, upload and publish. Okay. And then, yeah, after that, I don't know, eat lunch. <laughs> Uh, sometimes I actually have to write the reminder because sometimes when especially working a lot, I actually forget to eat, which is not a good thing. And then I'm surprised like, oh, my head hurts. Mm, I wonder why, genius. Anyway, so navigation from what I can see works perfectly because I can just go from years, quarter, month without any problem. I can go back here and the device is more than capable to jump around without any problems. And you can just go between different ones. Let's go back to daily planner. Yeah. So all of this seems to be working as expected. Now, why am I jumping around like this? Quite there. Uh, excellent. This is what I wanted uh, to kind of see. And um, this is an error. So it I tried to kind of reproduce the error that I have experienced on MDO and on another large document previously as well, which is that uh, randomly, I can't really catch it when or why it happens, but the reader book reader app will crash. And it says now, unfortunately, book either e-reader has stopped and you have the OK button. So it crashed. Um, has it saved my annotations? Let's see. That's something that I've not checked before. So let's see. Now it's opening up. And where were we? Were we in June 2? Uh, eat lunch. Okay, so in this case, it had enough time to actually save all of the changes that I've done prior to crashing. But this is the third time that I've had it crash with the uh, My Daily Organizer. And the other document that I also tried was this one collected works of Carl Jung, which is a huge document, 10,844 pages. And you have this, this like huge amount of uh, bookmarks as well. So let it uh, kind of load. And the bookmarks are also links, uh, technically speaking. So yeah, this is a ginormous document, as you can see, for over 10,000 pages. And that one, of course, if I would navigate and do lots of things, it would also behave in the same way. So. Um, there is some kind of uh, instability going on and I've only experienced this with very large and very demanding documents. Now, uh, My Daily Organizer is not such a huge document as the other one because this one is only 1,700 pages, but it's still or nearly 1,800 pages. But it does have 11,000 uh, hyperlinks and it does have all of these bookmarks and everything like that. And that makes it memory management wise a demanding document. So what I'm thinking is that there's some instability with how the book reader app is doing memory management and it might actually get overflowed and is not releasing the memory maybe properly but i'm just totally guessing here i just know that that is usually the reason if you have uh, between the size and complexity of a document and the app actually start stopping that's the first thing that i would actually take a look at which would be the memory management other than that I've also had sessions where it didn't crash at all. So yeah, I don't know. Uh, take it with a grain of salt. The functionality of my daily organizer on Quirk Logic Paper is all there. It actually all works, but the stability 
of the book reader is a little bit on the shaky side with larger documents and more complex documents and my daily organizer definitely falls into that category so you might have some stability issues on the quirk logic paper one other thing that i would really like to see them add is that while we do have the ability to bookmark the documents right now well this one is not bookmarked but if i long press and select text that becomes a bookmark that's how it functions currently in the readers but we don't have the ability to bookmark the uh, annotations however we have the functionality that's been implemented in workbooks and there's absolutely no reason why we wouldn't have the same thing in the uh, documents as well so you if we had a contextual menu here and consistency that i already talked about you would simply be able to long press and do a bookmark circle it around and when you go to your bookmarks you would see your two categories your uh, bookmarks or document bookmarks or page bookmarks and annotations and then you would have the ability to jump between them and navigate the documents that way as well so um, again here step definitely a step in a very very right direction but um, yeah there's room to unify the experience unify the functionality between workbooks and the documents and i hope that we get to see that um, yeah across the board because then it's going to be even better other functionality updates and improvements that have been added with the update 1.7 are sharing enhancements for workbooks so now you're able to copy and create new work uh, workbooks and folders within folders that were shared by a different user so if you have a shared folder from someone else you can actually start creating directories in that folder and copying and uh, creating your workbooks in there which is a really good thing for collaborative work they also say that we now have a faster library because paper now paper now caches library directories for faster navigation but that leads me to a uh, question because they say library directories for faster navigation yes but where's the ability to um create my directories here i know what they're saying they're caching the physical directories in the storage so that it can easily uh, access them and display them to you in a library that's fine and it is faster however what we do lack is the ability to have to create a folder structure or a hierarchy in our library so that's something that's actually quite needed um, because we have that ability in workbook mode but we don't have it in the pdf reader again that inconsistency in user experience so you should be able to have the same icon not a different one the same icon we're using for a new folder it should be down here you click a folder you create a folder and then you have the ability to actually um, reposition and move and reorganize your library in such a way because while this is now small and i do have the option of having them as listed which is all fine but if you have a larger library because now it's a functional reader and you have dozens of documents well you need an option to organize your library and currently we don't have that so that's something that i hope we see in some of the future updates and we also have one new addition in workbooks and that's this icon here the little uh, lock icon here so let's say that i am right about uh, i don't know here and I want to basically what it does is it locks the view so that you can't accidentally scale it or navigate away from it and you can still flip pages so you can still navigate your uh, workbook as you would right you just are locking it so that you don't have accidental scaling and basically palm rejection issues which is great that is great but it is not working as expected it's called lock page view and if it's a lock page view it's not working as it should current functionality is that it resets the zoom level to default and then locks the page view as you can see click resets the view and then view locked right so that is akin to doing this and then locking right that is not the expected behavior the expected behavior if you're saying that it's a page lock is that it retains the zoom and navigation in your workbook location and simply locks it because 
Presumably, that is what you might want to do, especially on an infinite canvas. So uh, right now, if I wanted to simply lock on this one and keep my workbook on this page on this level and flip to pages on this view, it's not possible because it will simply reset and go back. So that functionality is there. It's OK, but I think it's not behaving the way it should and the way you would expect a page lock to uh, actually function. In addition, uh, that kind of page lock functionality, when it works the same way that I described it, would also be a very good thing to have in the PDF reader because uh, maybe I would like to have a zoom level at this point, right? Like this for my PDF document. And I just want to lock the view and be able to swipe to the next page and keep the same locked view that way. However, we don't have that functionality. So that's something that's uh, kind of lacking and I wish that we would have that also in one of the future updates. It would make it even more usable. So Quirk Logic Paper Update 1.7, what's it like? Well, I think it's an excellent progress and it finally makes uh, paper a functional reading device as well with the ability to annotate with the hyperlink functionality, with the highlighting functionality and all of these things. So it's really, really good and something that uh, paper uh, users have been waiting for for a very, very long time. So better late than never, but this is definitely a little bit on the later side of things. So hopefully that's an indication that these things are going to maybe pick up the pace a little bit in the future, which would be a nice thing because the quality of what is delivered is great, but the pace leaves a little bit to well, a lot to be desired. What are the future improvements that I think that there's room for and that I would like to see on the uh, Quirk Logic Paper platform? Well, basically, the, the first thing I think is the instability of the book reader app when using larger and more complex documents. What I talked about with the My Daily Organizer and the uh, collection of the Carl Jung uh, uh, documents. Granted, these are you know, on the extreme end of things. But then again, you, in the case of My Daily Organizer, for example, that's a perfectly usable document that you would expect to use on this device. And it is functioning perfectly on other devices who are uh, lower specs or the same specs as the Quirk Logic Paper device. So it's not up to the device. And you can see that it's navigating Snappy super fast and it's able to do it perfectly. It's just that the app itself is having some issues and my first guess would be to check the memory management of the uh, app itself. So that would be an improvement number one to actually kind of see. Annotation bookmarks, the, um, the bookmarking of annotations that we've seen on the introduced now in workbooks, which is really, really good and original, completely original way of doing things. I would love to see that on the PDF reader book app or book reader app as well. And then you would have your page bookmarks and annotation bookmarks, and that would just make it super, super functional. Unified functionality and workflow between workbooks and reader. That's the main thing that's currently lacking. And I think that it would be useful to see this added in the future to kind of unify the functionality so to kind of learn one set of tools and it works across the platform. That would be a good thing. Ability to create a folder hierarchy in the reader library concurrently completely lacking. We don't have any way of doing that. And I think it's needed because the reader functionality is there and people will want to use it and will want to grow their library with documents. And when you have that option, then you need organizational functions to actually allow the library to be functionally usable in any kind of scenario. And finally, I think that the page lock that has been introduced on the workbooks uh, should function like a true lock, which means um, X, Y coordination in a document and the zoom level should be locked, not the reset and lock. And it would be helpful if that same type of functionality was added in the reader app as well, as I demonstrated uh, previously, when you zoom, when you have a PDF of a slightly different format, you can zoom in to a comfortable um, layout and then just lock it and navigate through the document that way. That would be also extremely helpful. All right, so now with every 
pretty much every update that we see for the Quirk Logic paper, we can see that Quirk Logic is definitely listening to their customers and is dedicated and committed to their platform, which is a very, very nice thing to see because bigger companies actually don't show that level of commitment as we've seen recently on Kobo Ellipsa, unfortunately. So this is a very cool thing to see and a positive move forward. I think that there's definitely other areas where the unification of the user interface and some of the functionalities can be definitely improved. But even as it is now, Quirk's Logic Paper is a far more capable and a far more powerful device than it ever was before. And for that alone, yeah, I heartily recommend the Update 1.7 because it does give a breath of fresh air and fresh life into the Quirk Logic Paper device. If you like the video, please like and subscribe and ding the notification bell down in the description below to get notified when new videos come out on my deep guide and there's plenty of new ones coming out soon. Also, in the description down below, you'll see the link to Discord My Deep Guide server, which is a community that we're building to, um, yeah, with like-minded people with similar interests to share your techniques, experiences, tips, tricks, photos of pets, etc., etc. Also in the description down below, if you are interested in the My Daily Organizer, something that I've shown a little bit here in this video, then yeah, you can see the playlist which contains a lot of videos that will show you what My Daily Organizer is. And in short, My Daily Organizer is a fully hyperlinked interactive PDF document that is your yearly, quarterly, monthly, weekly, daily organizer and a little bit more. So it offers users a one-stop shop place to organize your day, week, month, whatever it may be, professionally or personally. And it transforms these eNote devices, and in this case, finally, the Quirk Logic Paper as well can function as that into a full-blown organizer. So check out the videos down in the description below and the playlist for the My Daily Organizer to see uh, what it can do, what it can't do, and if that is a product for you or not. Thank you so much for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, and see you in the next video. Bye.